So this movie, Guns and Moses, it's a drama, some people call it a thriller. It is a thriller. It's a kick-ass action thriller about a Chabad rabbi who becomes an unlikely gunslinger after his community is violently attacked. The, uh, the villain or the villainous uh, element in this is uh, a white supremacist? Yeah. Yeah, the, the initial suspect that the police quickly arrest uh, is a white supremacist who has made anti-Semitic harassing type of comments to the rabbi's family and the congregation. And so the, the police quickly investigate him. Find the murder weapon and open and shut case. But it's not. And the only one who's willing to investigate is the rabbi. And the movie takes off from there. The movie's first job is to entertain. Having said that, when we made this movie about a, a rabbi in a Jewish community under attack, okay, so we knew it would always be relevant, but we never could have imagined the world that the movie would be coming out in. You know, we shot long before October 7th, and, and here we are, and its relevance just went up exponentially. Do you think that the anti-Semitism uh, created uh, by the media, a distortion of the Arab-Israeli conflict, might make it hard to get distribution for the picture? No, I think it'll make it easier to get distribution uh, because we've already seen that our audience loves this movie. Now, let's just say that the Sound of Freedom Reagan audience <laughs> loves our movie uh, and the other half of the audience, a lot of them, most of them liked our movie. But for real love, yeah, it's the Fox News, Red State America, uh, that embraces an authentic Jew, a religious Jew, who values his tradition, and when his community's under attack, he's not a gun guy, but he realizes that he has to get trained and get a gun and step up. And that's something that I've done myself. I'm a member of a volunteer armed security force called Maganam. I'm actually part of the security detail tonight. There's a lot of security here because that's the world we live in now. Jews have to protect themselves. We don't leave it to someone else to do it for us. The kid has been radicalized online, manipulated by people that he's, ne he's never met a Jew at the time that he's hating Jews at the beginning. And when he finally, that, and so many anti-Semites have never met a Jew. So when the kid meets a living, breathing Jew, everything changes. And so much of hate in this world is because people have not broken bread together. Well, but some people are mortal enemies. Yeah, they are. And if they're coming at us, we're going to protect ourselves. I believe in free speech. People want to have a demonstration, fine. When that speech crosses over into harassment, intimidation, actual uh, you know, criminal acts of hate, then enforce the law. And if the law won't defend us, then we have to defend ourselves.